ಅಧಿನಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಪಂಜಾಬ ಸಿಂಧ ಗುಜರಾತ ಮರಾಠ ದ್ರಾವಿಡ ಉತ್ಕಲ ಬಂಗಾ ವಿಂಧ್ಯ ಹಿಮಾಚಲ ಯಮುನಾ ಗಂಗಾ ಉಚ್ಚಲ ಜಲದಿ ತರಂಗಾ ತವ ಶುಭ ನಾಮೆ ಜಾಧಿ ತವ ಶುಭ ಆಶಿಷ ಮಾಧಿ ಗಾಹಿ ತವ ಜಯ ಗಾಥಾ ಜನಗನ ಮಂಗಳದಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ honorable members good afternoon all i hope this session will be a fruitful and useful one to the citizens of india let's start the session with the oath taking new members to take oath or affirmation secretary general please this is karima shah who stands elected from gandhi nagar constituency gujarat to now take an oath or an affirmation madam would you like to take an oath or an affirmation you know please in which language would you like to take the oath in hindi please main garima shah jo yuva sansad ke sadasya nirwachit hui hu is par shapath leti hu ki main vidhi dwara sthapit bharat ke samvidhan ke prati श्रद्धा और निष्ठा रखूंगी तथा जिस पद को मैं ग्रहण करने वाली हूँ उसके कर्तव्य का श्रद्धा पूर्वक निर्वाह कर लूंगी Mr. Rakshan Chaudhary, who stands elected from Rajmahar Constituency, Uttar Pradesh, to now take an oath or an affirmation. Sir, would you like to take an oath or an affirmation? An oath, please. In which language would you like to take the oath? In English, please. I, Akshay Chaudhary, having been elected member of the lower house of the youth parliament, do swear in the name of God that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the constitution of India as per the law established that will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India and that I will faithfully discharge the duty upon which I am about to enter.
Mr. V. Somasundra, who stands elected from Coimbatore constituency in Tamil Nadu, will now take an oath or an affirmation. Would you like to take an oath or an affirmation? In which language would you like to take the oath? Tamil Nadu. Elected Parliament to the Pinara, take the Patula, so the Sutra Mendirana, Kadavalin Namathil, India Sutta Amepin Pal, Satya Tikku, they may cut the Padavin in group, India Kalachara, Matu Urmi Party, we may not have been in group, Uzipali Alkirin. Honorable members, as we meet today, it's my duty to inform the House about the sad demise of Sri Krishna Kumar Singh. Member, Consultative you Committee, Ministry of Power and Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, who inspired us by his courage and selflessness. Respected Speaker, I wish to pay my tribute to the late Sri Krishna Kumar Singh, whose death has been deeply mourned. He was a member of the Consultative Committee, Ministry of Water Resources, River Development, and Ganga Regeneration. He had been engaged in social service and held different positions in various organizations for the past 20 years. With his untimely death, we have lost an active social political leader. I take this opportunity to express my deep condolences. Paid by the and the leader of the house. His sole objective was to help the needy, the poor, and the oppressed. In him, we have lost a great soul. I, I would like to associate myself with my party in offering condolences to his family. The house may stand in silence for one minute to express our deep sorrow. I express my deepest condolences to the family of Mr. Krishna Kumar Singh on behalf of this house. I call upon the Prime Minister to introduce the new ministers of his council members. Madam Speaker, I have great pleasure in introducing you and through you to the house, my colleagues, the new ministers. Mr. Marindu Singh, Cabinet Minister of Earth Sciences. This is Pallavi Merit, Minister of Commerce and Industry. Now, the question hour starts. Question number 101, Abhilash Gupta. Honorable Speaker, Madam, will the Honorable Minister of Defense be placed to stay abroad? India has a 15,106.7 km land border that it shares with seven countries. Considering the unity of India and neighborhood first policy of India, it is very much important to ensure modern and effective water infrastructure. The existing water infrastructure are largely underutilized, including deduction, surveillance and communication technologies as well as physical structure. What step has the government taken to solve this? Defense Minister, please. Honorable Speaker, Madam, recently the Ministry of Home Affairs has been approved the continuation of the central sector of border infrastructure and management over the 15th Finance Commission cycle from at the cost of rupees 13 crores. The BIM scheme will help the creation of infrastructures such as border fence, border platelets, technology solutions, border roads and border outputs and combine operating bases to secure the India's borders with 
Pakistan, Nepal, Myanmar, Bhutan, and China. Any supplementary questions? Yes, Madam Speaker. We have advocated Israeli and American border security practices without factoring in the differences in operation environment, technology, and human resource capabilities. Israel has a very small geographical size and population base as compared to India. Because of its highly literate populace and compulsory military education and technology friendly terrain, it is well suited for advanced technology solutions to mitigate border security challenges. Knowing this difference, why still India looks for their policy? Defense Minister, please. Honorable Speaker, Madam, India adopts only defense technologies, the intelligence services, and civil engagements in civil forces. India is going to forward with indigenization of defense manufacturing sector through making India combine new defense procurement policies. India has created the chief of defense staff. The Department of Border Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, has been executing and border area developing programs. Through the state government as a part of comprehensive approach to border management with the aim to fulfill the special development needs of the people living in the isolated and unreachable areas, situated near the international borders and to shatter the border areas with the entire essential infrastructures to the convergence of central, state and local and to participatory approach and to develop the security and well-being among the border populations. Any supplementary questions? No speaker. Question number one or two. Ms. Arun Moli Prabhakar. Honorable Speaker, will the Honorable Minister of Information and Broadcasting be pleased to say whether this government is cognizant of the World Press Freedom Index report which ranks India at 150 among 180 nations? If so, the details are wrong. Information and Broadcasting Minister, please. Madam Speaker, the government has come across media reports carrying the results of survey World Press Freedom Index 2020. The government will not agree with the conclusion drawn by the organization for the various reasons, including very low sample size, little or no weightage to fundamentals of democracy, adoptation of methodology which is questionable and non transparent, national private or Mura has not published the data on attacks of separate categories of professionals, including journalists. However, the information is being compiled. Any supplementary questions? Yes, Madam Speaker. The Reporters Without Borders also says that the number of journalists who were detained for their work in the past two years marked a 20% increase from the last two years. Is this government taking any Maintaining any track of the number of journalists who have been attacked and murdered during the past decade? What does the Ministry of Information Broadcasting have to say about this horrendous crime? Silence, silence, silence. Ms. Saramoli Prabhakaran, you cannot use such unparliamentary words in the house. Please be seated. Sorry, madam, I never meant to hurt the house. I was just trying to highlight the intensity of the crime. Information and Broadcasting Minister, please answer the query. Madam Speaker, Press Council of India has raised this concern about the authenticity and the credibility of the report on the basis of which the ranking has been done and also the methodology used to rank the nation. PCR in this regard has been communicated to the South Asian offices of organization. Any supplementary questions? Question number one or three. Aarti Mishra. Speaker Madam, will the Honorable Minister of Finance be pleased to state about the, the number as well as the percentage of students who avoid education loan from Bharti Mahila Bank along with total loan amount sanction and disperse during the current year state wise including Tamil Nadu? May I know the present rate of interest being charged by BMB on education loan and any other special offers provided by BMB? Finance Minister, please. Madam Speaker, Bharatiya Mahila Bank BMB was opened on 19th November 2013. 
and so far sanctioned about 29.19 lakhs of education loan in Delhi, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. Are they aware of it? I don't know. And then in Maharashtra alone, they have sanctioned about 10.19 lakhs and it has been distributed to everyone there. The correct interest rate which has been distributed is about 12 percentage for 4 lakhs and about 12.5 percentage for 4 lakhs to 7 lakhs and 13 percentage for 7 lakhs and above. The one percentage is given concession by the PMB for the girl students to have their education. How can they, they have to have their education and it has been intimated and all the women herself groups in the country has been given that concession. They have to know about this. Any supplementary questions? No, Madam Speaker. Question number 104. Now for Ali. माननीय सभापति महोदय क्या रेल मंत्री यह बताने की कृपा करेंगे कि क्या भारतीय रेलवे स्टेशन विकास निगम ने ग्वालियर रेलवे स्टेशन पर हमारे अड्डे जैसी सुविधाओं से लेस करने के लिए सार्वजनिक निजी भागीदारी मॉडल पर इसके विकास और विस्तार का काम सौंपा गया है यदि हां तो क्या 240 करोड़ रुपए के योजना तो क्या ग्वालियर रेलवे स्टेशन की विस्तार और आधुनिकीकरण में तेजी लाने के लिए क्या कदम उठाए जा रहे हैं? यह कार्य कब तक शुरू होने की संभावना है और इस कार्य का पूरा लक्ष्य क्या है? रेलवे मिनिस्टर प्लीज Honorable Speaker, Madam, 
There is no food grain crisis in the country. Due to the concerted efforts of the central state governments and the farmers, the food production has increased from 285.01 million tons in 2017 to 315.51 million tons in 2021-22, which is an all-time record. Any supplementary questions? Submit the documents to General Secretary. Any supplementary questions? Question number 106. Madhuri Arora. Honorable Speaker, Madam, will the Minister of Minority Affairs be pleased to state about whether the government is providing scholarship to the minorities in the country? If so, the details thereof. Minority Affairs Minister, please. Honorable Speaker, Madam, the Ministry of Minority Affairs is providing scholarship to the students belonging to six modified minority companies, namely Buddhist, Christian, Jain, Muslim, Sikh, under the following schemes pre metric scholarship scheme, post metric scholarship scheme, merit come mean based scholarship scheme, and Begum Hazrat Mahal National Scholarship Scheme. Also, the government of India has formulated a Prime Minister's new 15 point program for the welfare of minorities. Main objective of this program is to ensure that the underprivileged and weaker section of six centrally notified minority companies to have equal opportunities for availing the various form and welfare schemes proposed by the government and to contribute to the overall socio economic development of the country. Any supplementary questions? Yes, Speaker Madam. The data collected from the socio economic status of minorities in India states that. The rate of male population are seen to be higher in education, employment, and other sectors than that of female. So, how far the schemes are under implementation that reach the people of minorities, especially female? Minority Affairs Minister, please. Yes, Speaker, Madam. The schemes implemented by the Ministry are to reduce the inequality among the minority countries, and it is only meant for economically weaker section, underprivileged children. Candidates, women of the minority company, and not for everyone belonging to the minority company, and also as a part of academic scholarship schemes, are mostly earmarked for girls. The high rate of male minorities, again in the different sector, states that they are an economically weaker section of the minority company. Any supplementary questions? No speaker, madam. Question number 107. Mohit Bhattacharya. Honorable Speaker, Madam, I need clarification from Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister about the LPG gas collection problem. I want to know whether the government has raised the target and the Pradhan Mandri Ujwal Yojana to aid crore LPG connections and cover all households by 2020. If so, the details thereof along with the funds allocated for this purpose, including the steps taken to improve the infrastructure of the system in rural areas under the Pradhan Mandri Vijwal Yojana, state or utilize, including Uttar Pradesh. Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister, please. Honorable Speaker, Madam, while the target has been enhanced to 8 crore, with the additional budgetary provision of Rs. 4,800 crore, the list of prospective beneficiaries under Pradhan Mandri Vijwal Yojana has been expanded recently. As of 2018, of February 1st, there are 19,593 LGP distributors across the country. State and UTY details are annexed here. With their view to strengthen the LGP distribution infrastructure, OMCs have recently advertised 6,147 locations across the country, which are mostly in rural areas. The government has also approved above 115 Dukkam Shetya Vitras through different state, govern state governments and organizations which are at various stages of commissioning. Any supplementary questions? Yes, Speaker Madam. Whether the, whether the large number of PMUI beneficiaries are not come back for renewals, and in many states the gap between the consumption and the customer growth in 2017 confirms that under the scheme, lay dominant and non-fictional post. The first LPG cylinder since we 
EPL families cannot afford the refills. And if so, the details thereof along the action is taken by the government. Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister, please answer the question. Speaker, Madam, oil marketing companies have reported that nearly 80% of PMUI beneficiaries in the first year of the scheme have come back for the second refill. Any supplementary questions? No, Speaker, Madam. Question number 108, Mr. Surya Narayana. Vanakam Sabha Nayagrama Vargale. In the Kelvi and Amanda, we have not till Renda and the Pakamada Mountain Eleven a Paddy, not a good mother, Uppati and the Puli Rendil at some Putra Mulu, they see a Putta Avana Kapagam, ready to la either a Kelvi Paddy. Pathamoda Puli, not the left and Putra Mulu, all the door of Padibavadara, Dinibada Puli Rendal Pur in Jena. Melu, Renda and the Irvada Mountain, if I rent the Puli Tonic, I am the Southern Eta. Education Minister, please. Madam, 
the number of incidents of suicides by the students of Indian Institute of Technology, Indian Institute of Management, Indian Institute of Science, Central Universities and other higher educational institutions during 2014-2021 vis-a-vis number of students belonging to scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, other backward classes and minorities are 24, 3, 41 and 3 respectively. 122 such cases have been recorded to date. The Government of India and University Grants Commission have taken several initiatives to keep a check on the incidence of harassment and discrimination of students. The University Grants Commission Retrical of Prevention of Students Regulations 2019 have been formulated to safeguard the interest of students. Further, the Ministry has taken various steps such as peer assisted learning, introduction of technical education in regional languages to students in order to ease their academic stress. The Government of India, the Government of India initiative named Manodarpan covers a wide range of activities to provide psychological support to students, teachers, and their families for their mental and emotional well-being during the COVID outbreak and beyond. In addition, the universities conduct workshops and seminars on happiness and well-being. Regular yoga sessions are being held. Induction programs and extracurricular activities including sports and cultural activities are being conducted on a regular basis. Student counsellors are being appointed in institutions for overall personal development of students for and also de-stressing them. Further, students, wardens and caretakers are sensitised to bring to the notice the signs of depression among fellow students to the authorities so that timely clinical consultation may be provided. Any supplementary questions? No speaker. Question number one, Dilsha Sagar. Speaker Ma'am, will the Minister of Law and Justice be pleased to state whether the number of cases pending in various courts is increasing? And if so, what is the reason for the pendency of cases? And what is the average time taken by the government for disposal of various cases? Law and Justice Minister, please. Speaker Madam, no time frame has been prescribed for the disposal of cases. Firstly, the opposition party should know that the government has no role in disposal of cases. The central government is fully committed to the speedy disposal of cases in accordance with Article 21. The National Judicial Data Grid maintains all the data relating to the pendency of cases and the disposal according to Taluk Court, District Court, and High Court. The average times recorded for the cases are maintained based on certain factors. Any supplementary questions? Yes, Speaker Madam. With regard to technology, what step has the government taken to introduce artificial intelligence in decision? And if so, the details thereof along with its use in past practice. Law and Justice Minister, please. At present 2022, a committee on artificial intelligence has been constituted by the Honorable Judge of Supreme Court to look into all the issues of India and other governments. Any supplementary questions? No speaker, ma'am. Now it's time for zero hour. Mr. Vikas Hegde. Honorable Speaker, madam. In the Ministry of Education, we please to state that the National Education Policy 2020 has been praised for its numerous proposals. Though many of its segments have causes of concern and it has received strong criticism as well, which have been claimed as major loophole in the policy. Will NEP revolutionize the Indian education system to reach global standards? Education Minister, please. Honorable Madam Speaker, under the new policy, the government aims to bridge the social gap in access, participation, and learning outcomes in school education with the target of 100% growth enrollment ratio and zero dropout by 2030. One of the major changes seen in this current system is a shift from the current 10 plus 2 system to a 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system. While the former covers the age group of 5 to 18 years, the later intends to bring the preschool age group of 3 to 5 years within the formal education system. This has helped in creating a strong base for young students right from the age of 3. Another feature of this national education policy is that it intends to reduce the curriculum content and focus more upon developing critical thinking and enhancing essential learning. 
Introducing a four year bachelor program across specializations will ensure that there are equal credits and it, uh, it will avoid certain students to be at disadvantage. A regulatory body, National Educational Alliance for Technology, has been set up to integrate technology for, for better learning outcomes. NEAT aims to use artificial intelligence for better learning experience and personalize the uh, learning of the requirements. Any supplementary questions? No Yes, Mr. Rashid Khan. Honorable Speaker, Madam. There has been a serious breach of privilege by the members of the ruling party. Days before, a serious and a confident issue had been discussed. But the, about the policy of the India towards its neighboring countries was discussed, which later was leaked into the media and now has become a cause of debate. Mr. Rashid, um, have you given the notice about it? Yes, yeah. I have. I have already given a notice of it this morning. Your question is out of blue. Don't bring some of the like this. Before the cycle has been made, Mr. Rashid, the development projects are implemented on their GDP. Mr. Rashid, let them know about the discipline decorum of the parliament. Let them not make the people ashamed of the choose to be their representatives. Mr. Rashid, let the papers be laid. Please be seated. Now, this Gosam Yu Paul. Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region to lay on the table a copy of detailed demands for the grants of Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region for the year 2021 to 2022. Respected Speaker Madam, I would like to lay the paper of detailed demands for grants of the Ministry of Development of Northeastern Region for the year 2021 to 2022. Mr. Shuvaya Akhtar, Ministry of Atomic Energy, to lay on the table a copy of the annual report of the Nuclear Power and Corporation of India Limited, Mumbai, for the year 2021 to 2022, along with audited accounts. Respected Speaker Madam, I would like to lay the paper of the annual report of the Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited, Mumbai, for the year 2021 to 2022, along with your accounts. Mr. Roy Matthew, Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, to lay on the table a copy of the 8th report on the performance of Piero India scheme for the year 2021 to 2022. Respected Speaker Madam, I would like to lay the paper of the 8th report on the performance of Kelo India scheme for the year 2021 to 2022. Secretary General, to report message from the Upper Chamber of the Youth Parliament. Madam, I have to report the following message received from the Upper Chamber of the Youth Parliament and directed to enclose a copy of the cigarettes and other tobacco products, prohibition of advertisement and regulation of trade and commerce, supply, production and distribution, Amendment Bill 2022, which has been passed by the Upper Chamber at its signing held on the 22nd of November 2022. Secretary to lay on the table a copy of the bill as passed by the Upper Chamber of the Youth Parliament. Madam, I lay on the table of the House the cigarettes and other tobacco products, prohibition of advertisement and regulation of trade and commerce, production, supply and distribution amendment bill 2022 Act passed by the Upper Chamber. Honourable Members, I have to make an announcement. On my own behalf of honorable members of the house, I have a great pleasure in extending the warm welcome to Ms. Emma Scanlon, the honorable speaker of the Parliament of Singapore, and Ms. Luciana, the honorable external affairs minister, who are on a visit to India as our honored guests. It is very high power delegation. The delegation arrived on Thursday, 24th November 2022. They are now seated in the special box. We wish them a happy and fruitful stay in our country. We also convey our warm greetings and very best wishes through them to Prime Minister, the Singaporean Parliament, the government and their friendly people of the Singapore. Yes, Ms. Aditi Sharma. Honourable Speaker, Madam, recently three labourers in Mumbai forcefully hired for mass transit which is banned in India. 
The practice is still prevalent in many parts of the country. There are over 58,000 people engaged in manual scavenging. Activities claim that the number remains an underestimate and the practice is still prevalent despite the law prohibition of employment as manual scavengers and Rehabilitation Act 2013. 347 workers died because of cleaning sewers and septic tanks between 2017 and 2022. Uttar Pradesh has the largest share of manual scavengers, also reported the highest number of deaths. Majority of them were Dalits. So what are the actions taken yet? Labor and Employment Minister, please. Honorable Speaker, Madam. Recently, the government has announced two major initiatives for ending the hazardous practice of cleaning septic tank and sewer lines and making the mechanized and making mechanized cleaning a must. The Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment will amend the law for making the sewer cleaning of sewer lines as mandatory. Whereas the Ministry of Housing, Housing and Urban Affairs has not Safai Mitra Suraksha Challenge, introduction of the prohibition of employment as manual scavengers and the rehabilitation amendment bill 2020 as a part of social justice and ministry's national action plan. The plan aims to modernize the existing sewage system, coverage of non sewer areas, setting up of vehicle sludge, cleaning of septic tanks, transportation and treatment of vehicle sludge, and making a modernized vehicle management system. And equipping municipalities and setting up, setting up a sanitation response unit with helplines. Any supplementary questions? Okay, Minister of Earth Sciences to introduce the bill. Honorable Speaker, Madam, I beg to move for me to introduce a bill and further to amend the Indian Undertaking Bill 2022. That leave be granted to introduce a bill further to amend the Indian Antarctic Bill 2022. Those who are in favour will please say yes. Those who are against will please say no. I think the yes have it, the yes have it, the yes have it. Leave is granted. Minister of Power to introduce the bill. Honorable Speaker, Madam, I beg to move for a leave to introduce a bill further to amend the Energy Conservation Amendment Bill 2022. That leave be granted to introduce a bill further to amend the Energy Conservation Amendment Bill 2022. Those who are in favour will please say yes. Those who are against will please say no. I think the yes have it, the yes have it, the yes have it. Leave be granted. The house is now adjourned. To meet again tomorrow at 11 a.m.